Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Will Homescream and welcome back to another day in Destiny 2 Shadowkeep for some more Destiny 2 news and intel. In today's video guys, we're going to be discussing the new dungeon that was just released, the Pit of Heresy, and the best ways to get through this dungeon because it is quite the thing. We're going to be discussing some cheeses and obviously a glitch or two in this method. But before we get to all of that, I just want to remind everybody I'm still doing the giveaway on my YouTube channel at 15,000 subscribers. All you have to do to be entered into that giveaway is like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on the notifications, the bell right next to the big red subscribe button, and follow me on Twitter or Instagram. They'll be linked in the description box down below, as well as any other materials I reference in this video. So now guys, to kick it off, let's just get to the glitch right away the first encounter there is a way to climb the back wall as you'll see me attempt here this will allow you to skip the entire first encounter you won't get the chest however you can get past the first three little mini bosses you're gonna have to engage with it's not easy though this is gonna be something you're gonna probably want to practice and not count on until you have it efficiently versed or you are efficiently versed in how to do this simply follow the path i'm showing you here but then once you get to the top of this red tower you're going to need to use the sticky grenade climbing technique for those of you who don't know you can shoot any grenade that has sticky grenades on it at the wall and then climb on top of the grenade to traverse up it's very difficult. Mountaintop is probably the best thing to use because you get a lot of ammo, but there is a few grenade launchers that you can buy in your inventory, a green grenade launcher specifically from your collections that will also allow you to do this. Again, it will allow you to skip the first encounter. This would be good for things like solo flawless or speed runs. Keep it in mind, go and practice. The rest of the encounter is as such. You have to defeat a Hive Wizard, a Hive Knight, and a Hive Shrieker. These will have to be done all with swords. There is a new sword mechanic in this dungeon. The old sword mechanic is still there, except that we can no longer do a smash. Instead, we now fling the blade through the air, or do the basic hack and slash that you see here. These swords also do block. These will be the three mechanics you use to take out the three mini-bosses in the first encounter. The Knight, simple hack and slash. The Hive Wizard, throwing the blades at her. And the Shrieker, simply block and deflect his projectiles back at him. It's pretty simple. The toughest thing I found about this encounter, not only just traversing the terrain and having to deal with the occasional ogre, was simply knowing where to find the sword bearers to actually get your swords from at the onset of the encounter. The next encounter is a little less fun, guys. This is going to require going through quite the maze of activities. And by maze, I mean actual literal maze. In this section, avoid the unstoppable ogres and collect the orbs. The orbs can be collected by three or four different sections that have any sort of ads within the maze or in the caves that you use to avoid the ogres. Eliminate the enemies and collect the orb. I believe these were dropped by some sort of yellow bar acolyte. Bring the orbs to the doors to unlock the runes. Once the runes are unlocked, you will get to the next stage. A couple things to maybe want to keep track of is exactly which rooms you have gone into. I would suggest maybe traverse this whole section first, if it's the first time you're doing it, and get a little bit more familiar with where the ads spawn and also where you have been because it is a little bit easy to get turned around. Know that on one side of the map is a solid wall, and the other side of the map is a cliff. For those of you who are going for the Xenophage, this is also the area where you will find the floating platforms and the final boss for that particular exotic. 
I posted another video talking specifically about that boss encounter in my last video. On to the next part is the plates. This was a particularly hard section. I'm not quite sure the best way to solo this, but I did use one technique that kind of helped me and the person I was doing this with. Shout out to Reaper Giver, big help. We did most of this solo, or excuse me, two manning it without really any idea of what we were doing, and we seemed to do pretty well. The method that we used was eliminate three waves and get three different stacks of glowing orbs before we actually deposit any of them. As every single deposit will increase the amount of adds you get. So limiting the amount of times you actually deposit them will limit the amount of adds you get in a single wave or excuse me, you'll get more in a single wave than you would collectively. Basically, giving you more time to farm up and be ready. We were able to do this with only two dunks. The next section is pretty simple, except, again, it is fairly easy to get turned around. Traverse all these bridges and mine the traps to find the three podiums that have adds spawning. Eliminate the adds and the door will open. Again, keep track of where you are and maybe get a sense of the map before you actually start eliminating anything, as again, it is easy to get turned around. For the final boss encounter, big shout out to my buddy Open Load for helping me two-man this. The strategy that we used was hide behind the podiums that spawn the mini-bosses. That be it the Shrieker, the Wizard, and the Knight that you will have to kill to get the orb to spawn. These are the most easily defensible positions, and it allows you to clear out most of the adds surrounding the mini-bosses before you actually attack the mini-boss. We would usually go Shrieker first, as it being the easiest, and then double swords on both the Wizard and on the Knight. The Knight we would usually save for last because it always seemed to give us the most problem and seemed to have the most hit points. I don't know if that's just an inability to do mass damage to him because we were only able to swipe with the swords. Sword Bearers are fairly easy and quick to come by as far as farming them out. Standing on the corners opposite where the mini bosses spawn around the little circles will give you pretty easy cover and the boss won't really attack you there. Sword bearers don't really seem to come back there. You might have to deal with just a couple of uh, thrall. Juggling the swords is pretty important and it's always a good idea if you're doing this with two men to always have both people carrying a sword or at least mindful of where swords are or where sword bearers are spawning. I wouldn't say this is a particularly difficult boss encounter, however it was very very long as Crota seems to have quite the few hit points. We were using Well of Radiance as well as a bubble to double stack buffs and switching back and forth. The trickiest thing about this encounter is obviously having to go through three different deposits before you can actually get a damage phase. And then of course, 
actually having to be in the circle to do damage to the boss. I'm not sure if it was a glitch, but we did have a scenario where occasionally we would deposit and instead of actually getting a damage phase, we would get two orbs spawned on different sides of the map. We'd actually get a total of three orbs, but we were only able to deposit two. I'm not sure if this was raid mechanic, although at the time, the individual I was doing this with had already completed this and said he hadn't seen that previously. He, of course, had done it with three people, and we were doing it with two, so maybe it's just a mechanic to allow for less people to do it. Again, there was three orbs that would spawn. We were not responsible for having to deposit all three, but we did have to deposit at least two. I found it easiest to take out these sort of mini-bosses like the Knight and the Hive Wizard by literally getting two different swords and standing on either side of his throne room or spawn area. Cutting around the corners of the edge to deposit or dunk seemed to make the path a little bit easier as it got the adds to move slowly away from the actual dunk location. Beyond that, it was just sort of grinding down the boss. It took us quite a while with two men. I have seen that some people have done this a solo already. I can't imagine how difficult that is, and it certainly must require a lot of patience. Again, as far as mechanics goes, this was fairly easy. There's no specific plate that you have to be on to do damage to the boss once you're in a damage phase. You just have to be within the inner circle. He does move around, and he does slam quite a bit, so you're going to want to be careful. And of course, towards the end of his damage phase, he will burn the entire ground, so it is important to get out of the circle before he does. For anybody who did kill Crota in year one of Destiny 1, you will be fairly familiar with these raid mechanics. I'm just going to let the rest of the video play out, guys. This was me two-manning. Uh, I do have a recording of the entire um, attempt, or the entire two-man attempt. This was actually the first time we even tried to attempt a two-man, and we did it on the first try, so we were pretty proud of ourselves until I went and looked and saw that people had already soloed it, so really rained on my parade, but still pretty happy with it. Hopefully this helps you and your fire team, as I'm sure most people are going to be doing this for the first time in the later part of this week or over the weekend, and I'm sure most people are not going to be soloing it, as that is quite the slim minority of individuals capable of doing so. And also excluding myself. I might try a solo attempt, but I feel like I'm going to need a little bit more power before I can do one really successfully. Upon trying certain sections of this dungeon solo, I was able to get to the plates. However, at the plate section, I simply was not able to avoid enough adds and deposit enough orbs, or excuse me, defeat enough of the orb bearers to get a solid dunk to pass the door. So thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and follow me on Twitter or Instagram to be entered into that giveaway. Check out the link down below if you want to see more about how to do that one specific glitch to skip the first encounter. Although I will warn you, the video is a little bit dark, which made it a little bit difficult for me to actually attempt, but it is possible. There is a hole in the roof at that section, and I'm sure more people will be capable of figuring it out. Definitely go out and practice your sticky grenade jumps. And as always, guys, I am Wilhelm Scream. We will see you in the next video. Enjoy the dungeon and the new exotic machine gun. Little!